Hi, I'm Kristen Venuti. I'm a pediatric orthopedic nurse practitioner here at Johns Hopkins. I wanted to take a few minutes to demonstrate the screening exam for scoliosis. I've asked Annie to help demonstrate this with me today. Annie is a 10-year-old. She's a fourth grader and has been wearing a scoliosis brace for about six months now. She's doing an amazing job. She wears this brace 23 hours a day. You can see that the brace isn't noticeable through this typical outfit. Let's turn you around this way. And again, her curve is held right where it should be. There's been no worsening with this brace. What you can see is that the brace is one piece. There's a seam in the front. Oftentimes the brace will have three Velcro straps, each with a buckle, and the, the brace has just enough give in that seam for the child to wiggle in and pull the straps tight. Bracing works by applying, by applying a corrective pressure to the spine. What we can see when looking at the back of Annie's brace is a pressure pad here pushing against her prominent right ribs. She has a right thoracic, left lumbar curve pattern. We can see that she's getting corrective pressure coming from the right and from the left in her lumbar spine. Scoliosis is a condition that shows up in otherwise healthy kids. We generally catch this right as puberty is beginning. The best time to screen for this is around the age of 9 or 10 in girls with an annual exam every year thereafter. It's a very simple screening exam that can be worked in to every well child checkup. The first part of the exam is looking for any asymmetries. Looking at Annie from the front, we're going to check her shoulder heights. She has pretty symmetrical shoulder heights. The left shoulder is slightly higher. You can see how the acromion process is a little bit higher on the left compared to the right. We also want to look at the waistline. Her waist is pretty symmetrical. We don't really see any asymmetry when looking at her from the front. The next part of the exam is looking from the back. It's best to be positioned low on a stool or an exam chair and have your eyes right at the level of the child's spine. When I look at Annie's back, again I notice that the left shoulder is slightly higher than the right. And I'm noticing that her waistline is pretty symmetrical. I'll demonstrate what's called the Adams Forward Bend Test. Again, the examiner is positioned at the, at the child's back. Annie, can you stand with your heels together? And now put your palms together. And bend forward slowly for your toes. There we go. And what we're looking for here is any asymmetry in the height of the ribs. What I see when I look at Annie's back, again, I'm getting my eyes really at the level of her spine. I see some asymmetry in her ribs. The right side of her ribs are higher as compared to the left. And can you bend down a little bit further, Annie? And we see very subtly here how the muscles in her lumbar back are slightly higher on the left as compared to the right. Good, you can stand up. And oftentimes it's helpful to repeat the Adams Forward Bend test. Sometimes kids will be standing with one knee bent. It may give you a false positive exam. Let's do that one more time. Stand with those knees straight and palms together and slowly bend forward for your toes. Again, we can see as she's bending forward the right rib prominence and the left lumbar prominence. Stand up for me, Annie. Thank you. I also like to look at the child from the front, so I'll have her face me and do that same forward bend test, palms together and bend forward. Again, this just gives you another perspective, allowing you to appreciate any spinal asymmetry. I often find that I can appreciate the lumbar asymmetry a little more when I'm standing in front of the child. And again, I notice her right ribs and left lumbar prominence. Great. I wanted to demonstrate what we see on an x-ray in a child with scoliosis. This is Annie's x-ray from taken just today. This shows a right thoracic curve measuring 30 degrees and a left lumbar curve measuring 24 degrees. These curves, as, they, as the spine curves to the right, it also rotates. With that rotation, we notice on the child the rib prominence. The ribs are attached to the spine and that three-dimensional change that we see with scoliosis shows up on the child with scapular prominence and, and rib prominence on the back. The lumbar curve can oftentimes create some waistline asymmetry, shifting the waist to the left, giving a little curvier waist appearance on the right, 
and a flatter waist appearance on the left. We see that subtly in Annie. It's not too obvious, but we do notice that in her.